In this video, we'll talk about infinite series, what they are, and how we can talk about whether they converge or diverge. So a lot of things in math, name a lot of real numbers, we can't have a nice decimal expansion for, or an exact decimal expansion for them, mainly because they're irrational, and then there's, there's no finite number of decimals I can write that will give me the number exactly. For rational numbers, right, either the decimal terminates, and you can write it, or it's infinitely repeating, you could write it that way as well. But for irrational numbers, that's not the case. These are things like e or pi or sine of 1. These are all numbers that you could approximate as much as you want, but you can't write an exact formula for them. However, for all of these, I can represent them as an infinite representation, and we write those using infinite series. So for something like e, and there's no reason you would know why this is e at this point, we'll get to that later in this chapter, I can write e as 1 plus 1 plus 1 half plus 1 sixth plus 1 over 24, and the series repeats, which since this is a sum, we can write using summation notation, but now because we're going to think about taking infinitely many terms here, I'm going to have a sum with infinity as the upper limit. This is 1 over n factorial, where n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 all the way down to times 2 times 1. But that's e. That is a series expansion of e, the number 2.718. I can write it in this way and I will get that exact number. Similarly, something like sine of 1 I know is 1 minus the sixth plus 1 over 120 minus 1 over 50, 40, and so on which in a series notation is sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n because it alternates, and we'll talk about what that means in a little bit, over 2n minus 1 factorial. These are just two examples of what you can do with infinite series, writing out these numbers in a way that now this is exactly what it is, and I can use this to get as accurate of an approximation as I want to e. Right, say you want to know e to 50 decimal places, but you can figure out, based on this series, what you have to do to get to that point. We'll talk about what that means a little bit later. But the idea is you could then use it to get as accurate of an approximation as you want to e or sine of 1, not just what your calculator is going to give you for this fact. So what does an equation like this mean? I had written before that e was equal to the sum from 0 to infinity of 1 over n factorial. But what does that mean? I have a number on the left, and I have this infinitely large sum on the right. What does this mean? Well, the way you want to think about this is kind of like when we were talking about improper integrals before. The idea being, if I just look at the sum up to some number capital N, that's totally fine. I can work that out. That's not a problem, because that only has finite many terms in it. I can add them up and get what number that is. By the expression above, I mean that E should be the limit as big N goes to infinity of this sum. So the sum is a finite part of this series. When I take the limit as the number of terms goes to infinity, that gives me the infinite series result here. So the way we generally talk about this is the series is the limit of the sequence of partial sums. So what does that mean? Well, that means if I define, and this is the common notation here, Sn, which I know looks like Simpson's rule, but these come up in very different circumstances, so you should be able to distinguish between the two, as the sum of n equals 0 up to capital N of my series. So this a n could be anything, could be any sequence. In the case above, we had a n being 1 over n factorial. I could take a n to be 2 to the minus n. These are all valid things to put in here. These are called the partial sums because they are the sum of part of the series, because they don't go all the way to the end, they only go up to n. And then to get the actual series, I take the limit of the partial sums. Then s, which is the sum of the entire series, is defined to be the limit as my upper endpoint goes to infinity of these partial sums. That's why we generally talk about these series. They are the limit of partial sums. And the only way you can actually find what series are and what they evaluate to is by looking at the partial sums and taking the limit. We'll talk about other methods in a little bit for how to determine if they converge or diverge, those words coming next, but to get the actual value, you have to find the partial sums and then take the limit. That's the only thing you can do to actually evaluate series. So since we involved the limit before, we obviously have the issue of 
does this limit exist? Does this limit converge to something? And if so, what do we say about the series? So we say that a series converges if the limit of partial sums exists. And then if it converges, we can then write that whatever it is, whatever it converges to, equals the series with infinity at the upper endpoint. So the only way you can actually write infinity at the upper endpoint and do something with it is if the series converges. If this limit does not exist, we say the series diverges. And if this sequence of partial sums goes to infinity, we can say the series diverges to infinity to be more specific in how the limit does not exist. And so that's the idea of conversion and divergence. One other point about this, series don't have to start at zero. This could start at any number you want. This could start at n equals five. It doesn't matter. The important thing to be worried about is the infinity as the upper end point here. Just like that's how integrals became improper, that's the same reason why I have to be careful when talking about infinite series here as well. Let's get the idea of what an infinite series is. It's a sum, well, an infinitely long list of numbers. And then we can talk about, does this sum converge to something? If so, we say the series converges to that number. And if not, we have that it diverges.